Hey, Evan Reese here. I had a friend reach out recently who's been evaluating Onshape and they were asking how to do some things that they're used to from other CAD systems. And now this person has so much experience. They really, really know what they're doing. They just are getting used to how to do it in Onshape. So I figured I would go ahead and just answer their question here in case anyone else had the same question. But uh, yeah, the, the experience of switching to Onshape from another system can feel frustrating because you really know exactly what you want to do, um, but you can feel like you've been set back a little bit in your experience. And I, if that's you, I want to encourage you. Um, it really doesn't last that long and you will soon surpass where you were. Onshape is the best CAD and you'll be really glad that you stuck with it. The learning curve's not steep. You're going to be okay. Um, all right. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and show uh, a bunch of different ways to do this, starting with probably the most on shapey way of all. So the question at hand was, how do I create a plane that is at an angle um, off of one of the axes? And, you know, they're used to a CAD system that has axes as one of the default geometries, something that you can reference. On shape doesn't have that. Um, and honestly, I've never missed it, but, uh, I like how clean it is. Okay. So here's, here's how I would approach that. I would use not a plane at all. I would use the make connector. Um, and to make this work, I'm going to uncheck owner entity, grab the origin, and then I can go move, rotate about Y and start popping an angle in here. And that's it. I can sketch right on that, uh, shift S to do that. Um, and here we go. We're drawing at a weird angle. And I like that because it's really just one feature to get it set up, but actually we can do even better and make connectors have a lot of power. I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, but suffice it to say, if you're learning on shape, get to know make connectors. They are one of the most powerful things here. I'll do a deep dive in another video. Uh, okay. But yes, yeah, so the thing I was going to show you, if I just go start a sketch, which is this button, or in my case, shift S, cause I'm a hotkey guy, uh, you'll see that we have this right here. Uh, make connector and we we can make it right here inside the sketch so this would be good if I know I'm not going to come back and want to sketch on this one again it's just like quick convenience so that I can do this one sketch if it was a plane that I wanted to reference over and over again I would use the uh, the default make connector feature but yeah so there we go we are sketching off of the main world axis and there's a lot of other um, power behind make connectors that I am not going to get into right now because I'm trying to make this about answering that one question. All right. So yeah, that's how I would most likely do it. But depending on the scenario, there's some other ways to approach it. One is to sketch on the top plane and just kind of create, create the axis that you needed. And from that, I can grab the line and the plane uh, and the plane feature. And now I have this nice manipulator and I can change the angle. I could configure this angle pretty easily. Um, so that works, that works just as well. You can totally do that. Um, I am showing this example partially because I want to show off some of, uh, the power of pre-selecting in this feature and in other features. So you notice I grabbed line plane and then the plane feature, and it automatically changed the mode to line angle because it looks at the inputs puts them in this field for us and then says, Oh, well, let's see, what do we have here? What makes the most sense? And it'll give us that. So if I grab plane and that, it gives me offset. If I grab just a line, it's going to default to a mid mid plane mode. If I grab a point and a line, it'll uh, do point normal. So it'll, it'll set it for us. So this feature and in some other features, bridging curve comes to mind. Pre-selections are a really uh, powerful way to speed up. So highly recommend. Um, and if I didn't have a pre-selection, it just does whatever I had last time. So it, or at least it tries, you know, to remember what you, um, what you needed. It tries to make a guess. All right. So that's one way. Another way using uh, a sketch line would be to sketch on the front plane. And then this could be nice because I could uh, define the angle with the dimension or even, um, more powerful than the other two methods would be to make this reference existing geometry. So if I needed this plane to pass through other geometry, um, that would be how I would do it grab the line in the plane and then I'm actually going to set the angle to 90. So now we have that plane passing right through. If I edit the sketch and check final, it's going to run through all our features and show us the result as we go. So you can see this plane updating in real time, super handy. Um, now if I didn't want to create a plane that was aligned with any of that, the world axes, um, then I would reach for the routing curve feature. And I can hit add point and then begin to drag a line out into 3d space. And from there I can do the point 
uh, let's see, line angle, uh, point normal, there we go. And now I have that plane and we can edit this curve and get whatever we want. Um, and then the last one I'm gonna show is uh, using custom features. So custom features are another uh, thing that Onshape does that other CAD packages can only dream about. Uh, it's not a macro. It's better than a macro. Okay, uh, custom feature. This one was written by um, someone who was not me. Euler did not write it either, but uh, that's the name of the feature. Euler plane or Euler plane. How do you say that? Uh, this feature was written by Joshua Newth, who, um, aside from being an all-around great guy, used to work at Onshape as a developer and now works at a company called Reframe Systems that's like modernizing construction and heavily using Onshape. And it's such a sight to behold. I saw a demo recently. It was amazing. Um, check them out. I'll link in the video. Why not? Uh, all right. So this feature takes a plane as an input and gives you this really well-implemented manipulator. Um, I personally am very partial to features that have interactability like this, uh, instead of like this feature would just not be what it is if, uh, you had to type in everything here, but you can, and you can configure all of these inputs and do whatever you need. So there you go. That's a bunch of different ways to create, um, planes at wacky angles in Onshape. All right. Hope that helped. Thanks for watching.